In this video, we're going to be talking about Hall's theorem. So first, let's talk about Hall's condition. So hopefully you already read about matchings in the textbook. Um, so Hall's condition is, if G is a bipartite graph consisting of sets U and W, so here are our bipartition, right? Here's one part and here's the other part. And U is the smaller of the two. If they're the same size, this doesn't matter. You can take either one. Um, G, G satisfies Hall's condition if the neighborhood of some subset X of the small side is always greater than the size of X, right? So that's no matter what subset of the small side you choose, it should always be adjacent to more or at least as many vertices as is in the set itself. So we'll explore that a little more in just a second. So I know this is sort of a lot of symbols, um, but we'll see it in a few examples in a moment. Um, but let's talk about Hall's theorem. It says that a bipartite graph consisting of sets U and W, again where U is the small side, has a matching that covers up the small side if and only if it satisfies Hall's condition. Okay, so let's see this in action. Does the following graph have a matching of size 4? So first note that we're looking for size 4 because that's the size of the small side. We don't care how big the big side is in this bipartite graph. We are interested in the small side. And if this does not in fact have a matching, we're going to be trying to find a set that doesn't meet Hall's condition in the small side. Okay, if it does have a matching, you just find the matching and you list it, great. We'll do one of those in a minute. <clears throat> um, but this one doesn't. So what we're looking for is a set of vertices over here such that the neighborhood of the set is smaller than the set itself. So you might want to pause. So remember, neighborhood, for example, the neighbors of A are 1 and 4 and 5, right? All the vertices that A is um, adjacent to. So you may want to pause and think about if you can find this set. And in this case, if we consider the set B and C, the neighborhood of B and C, B is only adjacent to 3, C is only adjacent to 3. And now we have the size of the neighborhood of X is 1, and the size of X itself is 2, so but this violates Hall's condition. Because remember, Hall's condition said that the neighborhood is always at least as big as the set itself. And so you can essentially, I mean, you can see what's going wrong here, right? If you want to make a matching that you that covers up all of these vertices, well, you can either have B3 in that matching or you can have C3 in that matching, but not both. So whichever one of these edges you take, the other vertex is going to get left out. So like if you say, oh, I'm going to take this edge, that means there's no possible edge that you can use to match C. So this sort of Hall's condition encapsulates this idea that there's not enough space to go around. So let's try another one. Does this graph in purple have a matching of size 5? <clears throat> okay. So now in this graph, the bipartitions have the same size, right? Our sets U and W both have size 5. So in this case, you can look for a counterexample in either side of the graph, right? Either one can be playing the role of the, quote, small side because they have the same size. Okay, so again, you may want to pause and try and think about this for a little bit and see if you can find a set that violates Hall's condition on either side. So it's possible there's more than one, but the set that I had in mind when I created this example is BCD. Okay, so let's look at the neighborhood of this set. B goes to 1 and 3, C goes to 1 and 3, so nothing new, D goes to 1 and 3, nothing new. Right, well now the size of the neighborhood of X um, is not greater than or equal to the size of X, right? Hall's condition says it's supposed to be, but here, right, we have 2 Right, and that's certainly not greater than 3. So this violates Hall's condition.
So then the answer is no, right? Just like up here, the answer is no. This graph does not have a matching of size 4 because it violates Hall's condition. This graph doesn't have a matching of size 5 because it violates Hall's condition. So this is how it works. It's essentially saying, are there enough um, relationships here in this set such that everything can get matched? Well, if these three things aren't related to at least three things, then there's no way they're going to get matched up. And that's what Hall's condition says. So now let's see about one that does have a matching. So does this have a matching of size 4? Again, they are the same size, so I didn't label these, but we'll throw labels on them real quick. And if the answer is yes, then you just list the matching. So for example, um, if you want to match 4, you're going to have to take this edge, right? That's the only edge that's going to let you match 4. Okay, so C4 is one of our edges. And for similarly, right, if you want to match D, it's going to have to be this edge. Okay, so D3, that's another one of our edges. And then let's go ahead and take these two. So A2, B1. That is a matching of size 4, right? Four edges. It's a matching, right? None of the edges are incident with the same vertices. So yes, this one has a matching. So if you do have a matching, you just list it. Here is one, right? Proof by example. Um, but if you don't have a matching, you have to provide some sort of explanation, some sort of rigorous way of explaining why not. And Hall's condition gives you a way to do that. This tells you, no, there is no way for there to be a matching here because I can find this set that doesn't have enough neighbors to match up. So that's Hall's theorem.